Um, next one up. Cue it up. Is the most beautiful. And this was Matthew Shaxton. Matthew here. Right here, yeah. Matthew. Want to talk about it? Sure. I, we can show the live. So this is a video link of it. We can show the live. Do we want to see the lights? Uh, yeah, right it's behind your head. Oh, you want to go to a new tab and maybe type something in this thing? Yeah, what do you want me to think? Uh, Shaxted.com slash Divi. All right, so what, what this does is loads the street center lines from the data portal. Uh, and it takes about a minute to load, so if, if you just bear with it for a second, it loads a whole lot of data onto the screen. And it's a, it's a 3D web visualization using WebGL, um, a lot of different kind of data sources. Start center lines in this case, and then we'll see the Divi stations appear, the 300 stations appear as little kind of sprites and off. And then once this starts going, it grabs a subset of the Divi data, starting with the first day that was uh, provided, so was it July 1st, I believe? And it moves through it every hour, so parsing that big spreadsheet, grabbing every hour of data, and it visualizes it, visualizes it as these nice Bezier curves, um, with each origin and destination point being kind of the start and end points of that curve, and the height of that curve representing the duration. So as it loops through, it, it calls a new day, you can kind of, it's kind of small, but on the top left corner, it's actually saying 6 a.m., 7 a.m., kind of something. Um, so it's looping through the day. The colors represent the subscriber versus customer. So blue is the male subscriber, red is the female subscriber, and you know yellow is the tourist or the just kind of the off the street, putting your money to go take a ride. You can see some interesting things from it. Um, you know, it may not be the most informative, but you can see some interesting trends. So. As it kind of ramps up in the early morning of the day, you see a lot of, you know, during rush hour time, a lot of subscribers are going from generally the same kind of places. Um, as it, and maybe even, so here it's calling a new day. Right now it's like, uh, I'll look through it, you know, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. This is 4th of July holiday. 4th of July. So yep. it starts ramping up. I guess no one's at work this time. But <laughs> so during the day, though, you know, midday, a lot, lot of tourists. Though. A lot of yellow and tourists come into the picture. So you can kind of start to see large patterns like that. And this is a fully interactive environment, so it's in like the automated mode now, but if you actually try to like move around the screen a little bit, Chris, you like you, know, you can actually really get deep into the information and fly around and zoom in and everything to you know, two finger two finger zoom in or whatever. Give that a shot. Oh sorry, I have no idea. No no worries. You have to use the two fingers. Is it possible? Oh, it's made it bigger. That's helpful. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> two fingers. In. Okay. Well, anyways, um, you can like really explore a lot. So if you go to that link, you should be able to kind of really get into it and look at it. So is it one curve per trip? One curve per trip. Yeah. That's right. Some of them may have. It's, it's all hourly kind of breakdown there. That's kind of that. The, the server may be a little slow. It was set up to handle a lot of trap or anything, but uh, and I just enabled this thing on an Oculus Rift for a pretty while. You see that the curves right in front of everything. It's like it's pretty sick. How does a single curve account like, for like? Is it a single thirty-minute ride, or does it include like the data for like somebody checking in the bike and then continuing on? Yeah. So you know, I was originally planning to actually do a routing between the origin and destination point, just kind of doing a guess of the shortest path route or like one of the three shortest path routes. But this is really just saying checks in. You can't really tell which one is the check in and check out point in this particular example. I don't know what you that, but, um, it just draws it where that starting end point is, and then the trip duration is what that height is. You can see a lot of them are actually the same height or close to the same height. Even the really long trips I find is interesting. They're, they're kind of fitting under the 30 minute time frame, I think, for the most part, relatively shallow curves. Um, and I want to just say one more thing. Uh, you know, I mentioned that CAF exhibit going to May 8th. This is going to be um, kind of one of the pre, you know, this is like the preview version of a larger data model that's going to be featured at that exhibit. It's going to be on like a big platform trying to represent like the operational model of the city kind of idea. So there's going to be a bunch of like building footprints and you know, a year or two's worth of Twitter data in there. Um, 
Yeah. Let's see. Oh, but, uh, through all the 311 calls and you know, other other stuff that's going into it. So, you know, look out for that, I guess. Just to be clear, the trip data doesn't have any GPS, so we don't know the exact path of that device to go. <coughs> Just, you know, some point in the map where they started, some point in the map where they ended, and the time associated with each. And everything you're seeing is built off of that concept. <coughs> right. Thanks. Here. Thanks, Matthew. Very cool.